Hi, this is Margaret Bird, and welcome to Color Quest, and welcome to the gorgeous Todos Santos in Baja, California, in Western Mexico. If you haven't been, you've got to get out here. It is absolutely stunning. So I had the great fortune of meeting my creative coach out here for a few days of planning for all of the amazing things I'm looking forward to bringing you here on Color Quest in the year to come. Now to my great surprise, when we pulled into our house, there were rows and rows of incredible Mugambia, as you can see behind me. So today on Color Quest, I'm going to show you how you can take this beautiful flower and turn it into a very simple ink. Now, ink is yet another way to use natural color. And as you saw in my Prague ink video from last fall, you can create ink from anything that you can extract color from. So it's a wonderful, simple way to bottle up a little bit of that natural color from a trip you may be taking to bring home so that you can continue to enjoy those colors within your art practice. So let's go make some ink. So let's look at this Bougainvillea here. We're in Todos Santos in Baja, California in Mexico. And the Bougainvillea in our garden is spectacular and we have so many different colors. So today with my good friend and creative coach, Deshay Peacock, we're gonna go ahead and harvest some of these blooms so that we can make some ink. So, Deshay, hi. Gonna hi, swoop good? in. So this is Deshay Peacock. Hello. And she is going to be working with me today, so I'm so excited to be able to have someone to film with. And she's gonna slowly pick just a few of these pink flowers from different parts of the plant, because we never wanna take from just one section. We have so many here that we're gonna keep on just moving down the row and taking and filling up this bowl here. We're gonna fill about one bowl full and then we will do that with all the different colors so that we can make a multi-colored rainbow of inks using these bougainvillea. So look at this yellow orange that we have on the property as well. So full of blooms. It is February here and the bougainvillea are just in beautiful bloom. We don't need to make a lot of ink in order to be able to create some really pretty things with ink. So we're gonna be cautious about how much we actually take, but I'm guessing a bowl full is gonna be just about right. This incredible fuchsia. This was very similar to the bougainvillea that I was able to harvest and collect when I was in Aruba. And we tried a couple of different ways of extracting color from that trip. One was a, a hot 
extraction, one was a cold extraction, and actually the cold kept more of its actual color from the blooms itself, but the hot turned it into this really beautiful like light green. So although it wasn't the incredibly vibrant color of the Bougainvillea, it was still a really soft and pretty green, which is always fantastic to try different things because you never know how the color is going to react. I can tell you that with really vibrant colors, often heat is not its friend and heat can completely take the color out. So you always have to be really cautious with your heat, particularly when you're working with vibrant flowers and things like that. So while we were picking, some of these blooms fell off. It's always fantastic to pick from blooms that have fallen. Here, we don't have that many right now. I think it's just because there hasn't been maybe a lot of wind. So if you can find blooms that are on the ground, always best to do that first. So right now we're looking at coral. I'm super curious to see if we're going to be able to create five distinct colors using a cold extraction for this ink that we're gonna use to create something to play with and um, leave a little lasting memory of our time here in Todos Santos. Thank you. Deshay, you're doing an amazing job. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's so much fun to do this with a friend. Thank you. Oop, he's gone. We had a little friend in there and we're gonna let these sit out for a little while so that the friends can make their way outside and move on to a new bush or place to call their own. We wanna make sure we're not gonna hurt any of our insect friends along the way. Purple, really beautiful violet purple. This is gonna be our last color. begins the tedious process of removing the flowers from the stems. There are three flowers to every stem. So we're just removing those from the hard portions of the stem. Not being too super careful because at the end of the day we're going to be straining out any bits that are left, but just to help us get more flower surface area as opposed to stem since we're really looking to try to extract that incredibly vibrant color from the flowers themselves. Yeah, there is definitely a technique to it. I remember I after doing it, like you kind of like peel them down, I yeah, think. Yeah, you kind of like, yeah. So, I'm technique. It goes, I remember doing this in the, Aruba and like after a while I was like, oh yeah, okay. Like this, you like open it up and pull it apart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good. God, I'm doing it wrong. Or not efficiently. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So Deshay, are you enjoying this? I'm having so much fun. I love it. It's so relaxing. It is super relaxing, right? Mm -hmm. We have the view from here and there's the Pacific. The sun is getting ready to set. So we are going to step into the next part before that goes away. So we have separated all of our 
stems from the flowers and now we're going to start the process of the cold extraction and if you recall from my video from aruba it's going to be the process of taking water and adding it to each one of these bowls not much just a little bit to start with squeezing out, trying to coax out the color just with our hands. So taking it and working it just like this, kneading it. Two-handed kneading is perfect. What we're hoping to do is wake up the color out of the flowers and start to see it appear in this water below. You start to see some color coming out. It's so pretty. And same over here. I'm working on the purple here and we're starting to see a little bit of color in the Here comes the color. So we're adding a little bit in. We'll take a little bit more from here and add it. Just keep squeezing it slowly working it in, adding a little bit of water if needed. But since we're going to be making ink, we're going to want to have it be as saturated as possible. So we don't want to have it be too watery. There's that color coming out. We got beautiful different colors here too. Each one of the bougainvillea has given up a slightly different color. You can see it coming out. Beautiful. Let's check on these. They sat out yesterday through the evening and now they've had a few hours today in the sun to get the warmth of the sun to maybe coax a little more color out. And it's looking really good. Look at all those amazing colors we're getting here. So I'm gonna pull them out of the sun now and we are ready to start making ink with these. So, Deshay, hi. Hi. It is day two. We've allowed these to soak overnight. And so what's our next step? So our next step is we're gonna take this dye and we're gonna strain it into these clear bottles here and we're gonna make ink. All right, well, let's get going. I'm gonna show some supplies to start this process. We have our different bougainvillea and as you can see, it really made a really dark colors on all of these. And so we're gonna get these five distinct colors, which is pretty cool. And we have those. Look at that bright fuchsia color. Wow, incredible. And then the bottles that Deshay was referring to, actually I am recycling spice bottles. And although these are clear and recycled, which is awesome, if you're gonna keep ink, you're going to want to use a dark amber style bottle. From the ink that I made in Prague, I had these beautiful blue bottles. These are also recycled, just vitamin bottles, but they are this perfect amber and that keeps the light from coming into the bottle and potentially altering the color over time, that is. But since this is what I had available to me, that's what we're gonna use. Then beyond the bottles, we're gonna have to strain out the bougainvillea. And 
I am going to double strain it in that I am going to use cheesecloth just as an extra barrier and or you can just use a simple strainer. I'm just going to do this because with ink you do want to try to remove as much of the residual bits that could potentially get into your ink although sometimes that can also create really cool effects if you have things like little specks of dirt and stuff. Um, it really does make it sort of a natural beautiful potential shift in things. And then on top of that I have these materials that are going to be necessary and that is some kind of a binder and for this particular one I'm going to be using gum arabic and also cloves. Now cloves are being used as an option to help deter mold growth inside of your ink since this is a organic substance you can get mold in your dyes and your inks so i have these whole cloves that i actually brought back from my trip to prague and we're going to just put one of those into each one of the bottles just to help with that you can also use winter green oil as an option and I have also used oregano oil. If you are someone who has or are interested in essential oils, you may have one of those oils available within your inventory of oils. So I know I did. And then I have just a little tiny funnel that'll just help me get the ink or the liquid into the bottle more easily. And then we'll use this dropper in order to put in the gum arabic. So let's get going. All right, we've got everything set up. You can certainly reuse cheesecloth again and again for this particular process. I'm actually gonna use a new piece for each one because the color will stay on the cheesecloth and it's just kind of a pretty reminder of what we made here. So we're gonna start off with the, I believe that is the red. No, I actually, I don't know what color that is. <laughs> kind of forgotten what color is what. Pink. You think it's the pink one? Okay, probably should have made a note, but maybe it doesn't matter. This is red. Yeah, you're right. That one's red, orange. That's also like a fuchsia one. And then Pinky that's the, one. yeah, we had like a coral one. Oh yeah, that is right. We had a purple. Yeah, I think that's the purple. Yeah, I agree with you. I do think that's the purple. Okay, okay. so a slow process of just pouring the, the liquid in through the strainer. All right. Now the other thing I'm going to suggest for Deshay to do is squeeze it, exactly. Squeeze out as much as you can as, let me see if I can, yeah, get as much of that liquid out of the flower petals as possible. Don't wanna lose any of that beautiful color. Exactly, looks great. Okay. Squeeze this. Yeah, why not squeeze it again? Yeah, definitely makes a difference. There's a lot of water that's sucked up into the flowers themselves. So we wanna try to eke out as much of that dye as possible. Go ahead and pick this strainer up and see the beautiful color below. So pretty. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? It's a, kind of surprising, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Even though they're so vibrant, somehow I don't necessarily expect that you're gonna actually get this incredible color out of it. All right, we're gonna do the same for all the other ones.
Bottle it up. All right. yeah. There we go. And then you can just count the drops if you want. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll put seven. I'm gonna put a little extra in just for good measure. Shay, do you want to do the honors of putting in a clove? One clove. Right, here we go. Right, plop it in. And this one is ready to go. To the beach, actually. <laughs> I think you can see the beautiful color. It's hard for me to see, actually. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Bottle up the rest. Seven drops for good luck to Shay. Here we go. That one's really dark. Interesting. So Deshay, where are we gonna go now? Let's go to the beach. Yeah, what are we gonna do on the beach? Smart on the Yay! Beach. Woo I decided to keep these cheesecloths just for fun. And I've hung them inside on a line because definitely the sunshine would probably zap that color right away. But I was hoping to maybe have a little cheesecloth souvenir of this time here in Todos Santos making ink with my lovely creative coach, Deshay Peacock. Day. We made it. We made it. <clears throat> so tell us a little bit about where we are. We are at the Green Room, right on the beach here in Todos Santos, Baja, California, Mexico, with our beautiful dyes here that we made together. Wow, look at those, how pretty they look with the sun, right? So pretty. Yeah. It's one of the things that you can't see with the with these amber bottles, but it will protect them, but it is really beautiful to see them looking through the sun. And they're all bougainvillea. You can see the little clove there. That's gonna help us keep them fresh. So what are we gonna work on with these inks? Well, we're gonna just test them out and just see what colors we have here. So that's the first one. That's two coats. Wow. I'm not sure what color these are. We'll find out. We did not keep track, but I'm okay with that. I think yeah. when they dry, they'll reveal which flower they're probably from. Yeah. This is definitely the purple. Yeah, you can really see it. Yeah, definitely that's the purple. Wow. <laughs> 
this one, this one looks like the, the peachy one. That's going to be the peach or the, or the, we had that. Coral? Yeah, coral color too. That must be the coral. I see a peachy touch. Yeah. I love your, I love all of them. Thank you so much for coming here with me. Oh, it's so much fun. <sighs> so much fun. Now that was such a treat. I hope that if you live someplace where you also have bougainvillea, that you'll be able to try out making some very simple ink. It's a great project for travel. It's also a great project with kids and such a wonderful way to have a little memory of a trip you made potentially or just simply a fantastic garden activity. A quick note about my creative coach, Deshay Peacock. I have been working with her for four years. If you're someone who is building a creative business and you want to see it grow into the way in which you live, then I can strongly recommend hiring a creative coach. It's a fantastic investment in a business. And what's come out of my coaching with Deshay Peacock is actually a incredible friend who shares so many of my same travel aspirations and creative dreams. Now, next time on Color Quest, I'm not entirely sure where this is going to take me. I've got to get myself back to the Pacific Northwest and think about what I have learned and seen here. And I'm certain that some incredible inspiration is going to come for next week's video on Color Quest. Thanks so much. As always, feel free to give me a thumbs up if you like what you see and share the love of natural color with others who might want to join us here on Color Quest. Subscribing is also a wonderful thing, keeps our community growing, and is just so much fun to be working with all of you out there. So thank you. Have a great week and I'll see you next Friday. So this would be one if I had an overhead. It would be fun to see it from overhead. That would be fun. But I don't, so.